Um, hello, everybody. This is Farhan from uh, Lama Khan, and I welcome you all to today's uh, session. I'm sorry we're starting a little late uh, because uh, there's uh, some wrong link which had gone out. I don't know how many of you have received the link, uh, uh, the earlier link, but uh, we are just trying to move people from there to here. So they will also join us in a little while. But why? But by the before they join, I just wanted to uh, welcome Dr. Arif, uh, who's been a, a very old and dear friend of ours for a very long time. And um, so this is uh, this occasion is also a personal occasion for us to uh, be, you know, here. And uh, the thing about Arif is that he has been working with allergies for a very long time, and he's one of the most qualified people in India on allergies. And he's written this book that we've been reading ourselves for the last one week, Homera and I, and it's one of the most approachable books uh, written uh, by medical pract uh, practitioners on medicine itself. So it's actually a really nice book called Winning Over, Over Allergies. Um, here is our copy for <laughs> those who can see us. Uh, so this is actually a, hang on, let me show you my screen. So yeah, that's my copy. And we've got this thing, uh, you know, personally signed by Dr. Arif. And it's actually a pretty nice book. Uh, uh, and it's very approachable. There's a chapter on COVID as well. But, uh, you know, the way he's divided this thing into what are food allergies, what are, uh, you know, environmental allergies, food allergies, drug allergies. It's, it's, it's really nice. It's really nice. And uh, we will um, soon find out more about uh, these things from uh, him. Uh, it's, it's best that, you know, instead of me talking about the book and about uh, the very fascinating, at the same time, extremely serious subject of allergies, uh, that I will now hand it over to Dr. Arif, uh, who will um, first probably talk a little and then we'll get into his presentation. And after the short presentation, it's, this is going to be an extremely interactive session. So I wish that people ask him questions, etc. But just hold on to whatever you're going to ask until we are finished with the presentation. If there are questions you would like to ask during the presentations, you can put put it on chat so that you don't forget it. And we and I'll come back to those and then I'll uh, let you guys you know uh, ask those questions again. So that's a format we will follow. And uh, over to Dr. Arif. Uh, Arif, you can unmute yourself. And I would request other people to keep themselves muted during the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Paran, for the kind introduction. At the onset, I'd like to thank you, Humera, and the other trustees of Lama Khan for giving me this opportunity to talk on this very important topic of winning over allergies. Good evening, viewers, the ladies, gentlemen, and um, all alike. I welcome you to this uh, session on winning over allergies, myths and facts. Friends, I had this opportunity of traveling all over the country, from Kashmir to Kanyakumari and from Gujarat right up to Shillong, giving delivering more than 150 lectures, but now it's only webinars. And during these lectures, I was able to interact with doctors, professionals, laypersons, patients, and I was able to gauge the severity of the disease of a very common condition, allergies, widely prevalent across the country. But more than the prevalence of the disease, I was really moved by the lack of ignorance about this uh, condition amongst the uh, uh, population. And uh, because of these two factors, I went about to write this book, Winning Over Allergies, uh, Myths and Facts. And I'm really thankful to my friend, Mr. Bowman Irani, uh, who has uh, given a very kind endorsement that it is after having gone through this book that it is for patients as well as for doctors alike. Now, what we see uh, when I go across, uh, there's a very common question I'll put across. That is, can you be allergic to smoke, perfume, diesels, and cold? Which, uh, and usually the answer would come out as yes, when the categorical answer is no, because you per se, you, are, you can be only be allergic to living molecules or protein molecules, such as that's my fungi, pollen, or food particles. While the substances, which I mentioned earlier, they are chemicals, they act as irritants they only worsen the underlying allergy. Uh, you may put it per se as adding insult to injury or in a local language, it could be as zakham pimirchi. So when we have these allergies, when they're prevalent, the most, this is how the allergies would come about. 
usually it all starts in child in infancy. First is the gastrointestinal manifestations. Then around six months to one year, the skin manifestations come. Then around two years, the wheezing or the chest allergies come. And then later on in childhood, the uh, nasal allergies, which is rhinitis, and it will gra gradually increase in childhood into adolescence and right up to adulthood. It's not always necessary that you will have all these allergies at the same time. It's also not necessary that uh, uh, that it will follow uh, this classical pattern. One can predate the other. But and sometimes it may happen that all throughout childhood and adolescence, you may be normal and in adulthood, you land up with the allergies. Why so? Because that allergy was always there. It was sub uh, uh, suboptimal. But when the environment was came up, which suited uh, uh, the uh, allergy, the allergy manifested itself. It, it was like it was like a volcano dormant all these years. And suddenly, when at the right time, the right stimulus, the right environment, it manifested itself. So it is very important whenever you diagnose these allergies, whenever you find that you have an allergy, that you should bring about a complete and a, a good control of these allergies. Because if you do not control it, then it will have a snowball effect, meaning a snowball down a snow mountain. It will gather steam, uh, it will uh, gain in size over the years. Now, this is a study which was published by me. It was a comparison in between USA and India. Now, this is what in the West they spend on allergic disorders in America. It is almost $6 billion, which is uh, equivalent to the government of India health budget. And if you combine both the direct and the indirect expenditure, which is almost $12 billion, it is half of what the second largest army in the world, the Indian army, spends. Now, why is the West spending so much on such a which we consider a very trivial disease. It's only because of three letters, QOL, quality of life. In India, unlike in the West, you can spit on the road and get away without any financial or without any social consequences, or you can snore and get away with the spouse. But in the West, the pressure is so much to look good, feel good, and smell good that they are willing to spend the money required, millions and all, on this disorder. And the other, which I mentioned earlier, is the wide prevalence of the uh, lack of uh, knowledge about this condition. Now, these are a few anecdotal episodes to highlight uh, the uh, uh, prevalence of this ignorance about this disease amongst the medical personnel. Now, this is what uh, a colleague of mine, she was in Gulbarga, uh, and she wanted to come go to from Gulbarga to Chennai to attend a workshop. And the HOD, the professor, asked her, uh, why do you have to travel 800 kilometers so far just to learn about an allergy of the nose? And having me myself having set papers for a national university, I found the level of the students or the postgraduate students about allergy not up to the mark. And so as a result of this wide ignorance of the knowledge of allergy, this is what we see. Okay, everybody is familiar with this. A hundred thousand people okay, gather in the city of Hyderabad once in a year in June to partake this portion of this uh, fish medicine. This is a reflection, it's only a reflection of the wide prevalence of not only the ignorance of the disease among the medical personnel, but also the educated people, as well as the wide prevalence of the disease. And you cannot blame these innocent people, okay? They are not to be blamed. It is just that ignorance which is there around in our society, which has to be dealt with. So, now, this is uh, the pattern of allergy in the Western countries. The allergy started over there way back in the 1960s, okay? And it has gradually increased and they stabilized or plateaued in the 80s with the increased use of inhalation medicine. And they have remained static, the respiratory allergy. But now, from the beginning of this century, 2000, what we see out there is now an, an epidemic of food allergy and skin allergy, that is eczema. And one of the reasons is because of increased food uh, food allergy testing. Now, we, as in most other conditions, we are almost 20 to 30 years behind the West. It is now only a matter of time, very soon, that we will be seeing an epidemic of food allergies and skin allergies with this change in the environment, the change in the food environment. And so uh, at the moment, we do see a lot of children, NRI children, who come from the West or from the Middle East 
with a lot of eczema and a lot of skin allergies and food allergies. And because although the gene is there, now we find the environment has changed. And when the same environment changes in India, the food environment which I'll be speaking to you subsequently, we will be seeing this uh, epidemic of food allergies and skin allergies very soon. Now, the next thing is, why are we seeing so many allergies nowadays? The explanation is based on the hygiene hypothesis. Now, what is this hygiene hypothesis? I'll start with my own personal example. My mother, the, she had 10 siblings. We were five siblings and I have two children. Now, we achieved this at the beginning of the century. And this pattern is secular. It has a secular distribution across the same socio-economic background throughout our country. Now, the West achieved this way back in the 60s. Okay, So what is this small family size got to do with allergies? When you have a small family size, you have very few children in the family, then the, you don't get this repeated viral and bacterial children. I mean, uh, repeated viral and bacterial infections. When there are many children in the family, you are exposed to uh, other children with the viral and bacterial infections, and you get these repeated viral and bacterial infections. And because of these repeated infections in big families and large families, you're more uh, uh, likely to, it will lead to the development of the innate immunity, which will be a, enable you to fight allergies. Now, and this has been proved by uh, from daycare centers in, uh, in America. Children who went to a daycare center at a particular age group had a lesser incidence of allergies as compared to those who do not go to the daycare center. Now, how does it transform immunologically? At birth, the predominant cell, what you see out there is a TH2 type of cell. Now, if you are exposed to allergies repeatedly, I mean, to infection repeatedly, then it will get converted to this uh, new type of cell called TH1, and there'll be no allergies. But if you're not exposed to repeated infection, this cell will remain as it is, okay? And this cell is the biggest culprit in this whole allergen cascade and will lead to allergies. Now, what is this hygiene hypothesis? Hygiene hypothesis is nothing but what all good uh, municipal administrations, what good government should aim for. Clean water, good sanitation, uncontaminated food, water, uh, control of hookworm, regular anti intake. Now the government of India has started this practice of deworming all children between the ages of 15 months to 15 years. Yes, it should be there, but then the, the spin-off of that is that ultimately it may lead to allergies. Now what is the body's defense mechanism against allergies? In this book, what I have tried to use the analogy of the immigration officer dealing with infiltrators or undesired elements coming into the country and how it will deal with it. Uh, with that analogy, I've tried to bring it out. But basically what I want to tell you out here is that our, our country has an excellent Navy, Air Force and Army. We have a border security force, we have the production factories. But all this will not function well this will not give the result unless and until you have a good command and control center, unless and until you have good uh, supply lines and you have good communication between all these systems. And that is in my question hour, I'll explain how this failure of this system through practical examples, the uh, failure of this uh, command and control and supply lines and communication has led to uh, to many diseases has led to defeat of big and huge armies. Now, the first disease is allergic rhinitis or the nasal allergy. The characteristic feature of a nasal allergy is sneezing. You need to differentiate a common cold from a nasal allergy. But I, these are COVID times and I want to put it across to you that in COVID, you don't normally get sneezing. And I'll give you a very uh, personal uh, uh, example of this ignorance in the way back in the month of late february i was a co co examiner for an undergraduate examination and i was sneezing away and my co-examiner got so scared of it this year only that the next day she changed her position and went with another exa examiner i understood her fears and all but i want to put it across that any person sneezing don't think of it as COVID. it is, could be a, just a common cold or it could be just an allergy wheezing or asthma this has life. This is a basically a lifestyle disorder, and if your lifestyle is sedentary, leading to obesity and all, it, your your wheezing or your asthma will progress from mild to moderate to severe, 
and from an interval in between one to a severe form. Now, snorers and mouth breathers, especially in children, is very, very important. This is because of the enlargement of a small pear shaped gland known as the adenoids, which is located in a very tight geographical location. And because of this ob obstruction of that air passage just behind the nose, what you see, these children may have restlessness in the sleep, they may, or they may have teeth grinding, teeth grinding, or they may, during the daytime, they may be very hyperactive. There is a reason behind it. And a lot of parents bring the children to me saying that the child is very hyperactive and uh, the pediatrician or so and so has uh, recommended that they should go to a child psychologist. I go back into the sleep pattern and from the sleep pattern we come to know it has been a really disturbed sleep because of these glands. It could be because of infections or it could be because of allergies and that is what we need to look into. A hyperactive child or any child with teeth grinding as having some other disturbance. It could be nothing but due to allergies. Food allergy. In the U, we don't have the studies in India, but in, uh, in, in America, about 1 to 2 percent of the adults suffer from food allergies and 6 percent suffer from food allergy. But in India, 20 percent of the population will tell you that I have some form of food allergy, when in fact, it needs to be differentiated from food intolerance. Uh, uh, another example I'll tell you. There are certain foods like, uh, uh, ground, uh, like uh, groundnuts, uh, 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 tree, ground nuts, tree nuts, or your salty uh, snacks. You have a chocolates, bana uh, uh, bananas, so when, uh, or brinjal. When these foods, okay, now they have a chemical called histamine in large quantity. So if you eat these foods in in a substantial amount, you may get an allergy. You may get so you may not get an allergy. You may get a reaction in form of itching or a rash. But if you're tested for these food items it will all come negative. So because of certain uh, foods having certain chemicals in a large amount, will they uh, give a reaction in the, uh, in the patient, in the, uh, in the population, but they necessarily it is not an allergy. Skin and eye allergies, okay, all these things which you see is hives, red eye and eczema, all this causes itching. But I want to mind you, all itching is not allergies, okay? Now in urticaria, which, which is known as hives, uh, we have only in 10% of the cases, uh, allergy may be a cause. In almost 50% of the cases, we, there may be no cause. And they may have to be on an anti-allergic for a very long time. And taking these medications on a long-term basis has no side effects. A red eye is a very technical thing and it's best for an ophthalmologist to, be, uh, to see it and deal with it. Now, eczema is a very important thing which has been really been increasing. And this is a picture I want to, everyone to see. Normally, a skin is like this. You know, they have these bricks and there's cement in between. So the irritants can't get in and the moisture can't get out. But people who have eczema, people who have very dry skin, oh, they have skin like this, in which the irritants can just get in or the moisture can just get out, which leads to inflammation inside. So as a result, the best way to deal with it is use a good moisturizer. Now, there's a technique for using the moisturizer. What you have to do is to have a good bath for at least three minutes and without drying the skin, apply the gel onto the skin so that it traps the water inside and the gel acts as a cover, as a shield so that the irritants don't get in and the moisture does not get out. It does normalizing the skin surface using this moisturizers. Now, the thing about allergy is that the very peculiar thing, you can never die of allergies. You can, of all these allergies which I mentioned, You'll never get admitted in the hospital because of these allergies, but it leads to a state of chronicity and leads to so much suffering and uh, so much impairment of the quality of life that people will get the patient will come to it and tell me, doctor, please admit for five to 10 days. Give me any injection, give me anything, but get this thing out because the suffering is so much. But there are two allergies. Okay. One is the drug allergy and anaphylaxis, which can lead to death. Now, drug allergy is uh, very difficult to diagnose because there are no validated or uh, uh, proved uh, tests for it. But if we, by a very good history, a detailed history, we can pinpoint th the drug. And it needs to be pointed out because we do not want you unnecessarily to be avoiding drugs to which you don't have an allergy. Anaphylaxis is usually due to an insect bite or it could be due to any particular food item, especially the tree nuts, fish and uh, eggs, which are very high in proteins. Six to eight percent of the 
a western population ha of uh, in children has an allergy they all carry this epipen and the moment they get it they just jab it on the self jabbing and they all normal they don't die now what is the way of detection and treatment so we have the lab diagnosis the allergy testing and the environmental pollen control i'll go, go into first now the problem with this lab testing okay now we have is that is a very specialized and has to be done in a very specialized lab and it's really costly therefore when you want to get it done get it at good lab but unfortunately because of this lack of uh, uh, knowledge among the population this ignorance and the wide prevalence of the disease we have many labs okay which have come up and they give all this full page advertisements and with this full page advertisement they they lure in uh, these innocent people and we have made various complaints and these are the various labs which have been closed down the police have raided it but in spite of this i tell you there are so many patients who come to me who have got their lab tests done at this fake lab so i want request you please get your lab test done at and this a message should go across in the community that is for allergy testing should always be done at standardized labs and by standardized methods what i do normally in my is do a direct testing of the skin prick test a drop of the allergen or what he may be allergic to is put on the skin we prick it and we wait for 20 minutes and we see the reaction now this is a test which might uh, interest you very much prick to prick test and somebody comes to me i say i have a banana allergy or i have an apple allergy what i do is a very simple i will prick the banana or the apple and then prick with the same lancet i will prick the skin wait for 20 minutes if there is a reaction you have allergy if you do not have a reaction with 100% guarantee i can tell you you do not have allergy to that particular food item and this is the best way to get all those foods which you have in your mind that i am allergic to this i am allergic to that to get it out of your mind completely and eat and enjoy those foods all your life now environmental control now this is a very common scenario across the country across the world in all middle class homes now you notice here very carefully you have this house with beautiful curtains see the sofa is a very well upholstered sofa with a very furry carpet and a family all sitting on it and most important is they all on the sofa on the screen on social media it may be a phone or it can it could be your laptop or it could be the screen now this is a sure shot of developing more allergies and respiratory problems because when you have uh, the family sitting like this you try you tend to make the house more comfortable more warm so that and you keep interacting with this uh, i mean with the screen without to be, uh, i mean you completely always watching the screen without a break which leads to hyperventilation sometimes okay and with all these the what you see is these are all dust gathering measures these furry carpets and all so i tell you what i tell them your house should be like a five star hotel room where you don't have all these furry things and these upholstered sofas and there are <coughs> i mentioned the book the way it should be or oh, and <coughs> the other important thing is you tend to um uh, snack a lot and which will lead to obesity and will further compound the problem so now we have uh, uh, dealt with these three things next we we'll deal with the drugs and devices immunotherapy and counseling now what about the drugs and devices you're going to be a patient with allergy is going to be living with this uh, drugs maybe all his life so he should be educated about the drugs <coughs> the most common drug which is used in allergy are the steroids and it is the oral steroids which has given the steroid the bad name which have made it a real culprit but now we have steroids in an inhaled form or in the intranasal form and direct applications and i tell you if they use correctly in the right manner there's a technique is taught to you how to apply when to apply you these steroids in this new format can be used all your life without any complications the other problem is is the nebulizer you have now almost every home has a nebulizer machine but patient with asthma in uk they are not allowed to have a home nebulizer because if you have a home nebulizer you unnecessarily delay patient and this is specifically i am telling you only patient with asthma using home nebulizers are at risk for for that or for for the complications so in uh, no 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 patient with asthma in our country should use a home nebulizer uh, there there are other devices which they should be using immunotherapy is a new form of treatment you know allergy like 
hypertension and diabetes is a lifelong disorder. But unlike the, uh, the, those two conditions, it can be cured completely if you go for immunotherapy. You know, the, the allergen which you are allergic to is given to you either in an injection or an oral form, but it has to be given for at least three years. And the last and the most important thing is the counseling. <coughs> the counseling is very important. Why is counseling? In counseling, the most important thing is the time. Okay, because we need to explain the disease and the drug usage in detail. We have to give a practical demonstration of the uh, 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 use of the device to the patient. And we should never underestimate the patient's hunger for knowledge for a long standing disorder. Because, and on the basis of, and it, therefore it is necessary, it is our duty, not only we as medical personnel, but also this, the, uh, the educated people to transform our, our community into an educated form. Because if this is not done, then we have a state like this. If you have watched it, the house MD, where this doctor uh, is trying to uh, question this lady who has been complaining that she has been using four inhalers in four weeks without any response. And then he asked her to demonstrate how she has been using it. And this is what you see the, uh, using her inhaler, inhaler device. So it is absolutely necessary that a practical demonstration and a good education of the patient should be done. And, the, and the, this brings us to the last point, that is the community health and traditional treatments. Now the traditional Indian practices, if you see, is this one. If you see this house in Hyderabad, you must have seen many homes like this. When these homes were there, what used to happen? The entire family would sit out in the open. They would be taking a lot of sunshine, getting vitamin D. They would all their bed sheets, pillow covers, carpets, everything would be put in the sun. That would kill all the dust mites. Therefore, they had a very healthy living. But now what is happening is all these homes are being broken down. They're all grouping together and making high rise buildings without any space on either side. So the, the house is closed on all three sides with the fourth side into the door and into the road, which allows all the uh, pollution to get in and there's no space for the pollution to get out. And that is why we have so much of respiratory allergies and respiratory problems in the population. And this is the, the study, a very important study, which was from Germany, which I want to bring it out to you. What they did was 600 children they selected from a family which had a history of peanut allergy. And, and for the children in the age of four to 11 months were picked up. Half of them were made to uh, uh, eat peanuts between four and 11 months. The other half was made to avoid peanut. Now what happened, the section which avoided peanut had a higher incidence of almost 17% of developing allergies. Well, those who are consuming peanuts, only 3% develop allergy. Now this is what the West has achieved and they are telling us but in our society, in our culture, in our traditional Indian culture, we, it has been a strict practice to breastfeed the child exclusively for the first four to six months. And at the age of six months, they are in different cultures across the country. They have different uh, religious customs in which they uh, introduce the weaning food. It could be a protein uh, food or it could be a carbohydrate food with oil added to it. This is what we are now trying to get over it get uh, i mean remove it and go in for the market products so when a mother comes to me and asks me what food she should give to her uh, baby at the age of six months i tell her give what your mother gave you or i ask her mother because now all of the uh all are ask your mother what her mother gave uh, her, your grandmother gave her because we have to get back to the traditional food items to prevent this food allergies because if we start following the Western food concept of using ready-made products, you very soon you will see this epidemic of allergies, of food allergies and skin allergies in India. And uh, now I've talked about this whole thing to you uh, as, uh, as an educated uh, group, but we need to percolate this education right down to the community level, to the most deprived uh, people. And that is why I have this uh, uh, which Farhan and all are part of it, so it, especially on bees for the economically deprived, where we go into the community and here we see, we give them, we teach them. And in this book has these small modules, how to manage fever, how to manage vomiting, loose motions, and how to create a good sanitation and good environment for these people. 
which you should go through, which you should now multiply into this community, which I have been doing, okay, as uh, teaching the girls, because because it is a, a duty, because each one teaches one for the upliftment of, of a backward community, unless and until we educate the entire public, they, uh, the, these people, our society will not improve, especially when we educate the women of the house, then they will put, they'll, uh, they'll put a pressure on the men folk. The men folk will put a pressure when they acquire this new knowledge about sanitation, about hygiene and all, then they will start putting pressure on the elected representatives. And it is then when the pressure is put on the uh, elected representatives by the newly acquired uh, knowledge of this community, then only the elected representatives will start acting and will start improving the, uh, the, uh, the environment the, and will work on sanitation and hygiene. So it is necessary that is not only we medical professionals, but also on the uh, community to acquire this uh, basic knowledge and transfer it to the, those people who need it. And lastly, since this is a days of the COVID, I thought we cannot end this chapter on um, allergy uh, without talking about COVID-19. A few uh, words which I want to mention is, which I mentioned in this book, the last great pandemic was way back in 1918, which, uh, which was the uh, uh, Spanish flu, and almost 3 million people in undivided India died of it. But the important thing which was there at that time was the presence of concomitant timing. So it is very necessary that we have to pay emphasis on our nutrition, which could include having your things like ginger or uh, um, uh, other uh, cardamom and other spices, uh, which uh, and having a healthy diet is very necessary. Uh, getting good sunshine for vitamin D, okay. And then now we have the government of India, which talks about Ayush, talks about alternative medicine. I want to put it across that all these things will only boost your immunity. They will have no effect on the disease once it has afflicted you. So it is only good for they can only act as immune immune boosters. The second point which I want to put across is that you should avoid getting into believing all this and what you're seeing on YouTube, WhatsApp, and other such messages. Because even the World, uh, the World Health Organization is being, doing some assault. So that, that's, uh, there is no question of you believing or what is happening uh, on WhatsApp. Now, the last is the which drug so far, after all these studies and all these experiences, it has been found that there's only one drug that is remdesivir and to a certain extent, papivinade, an antiviral drug, which is found to be effective. So ultimately, the best way of preventing allergies I'm mean, sorry, preventing this COVID would be uh, uh, good uh, sanitation, social distancing, and third, repeated testing. And not to forget our traditional Indian customs in prevention of diseases. <coughs> a few of them was a way of salutation, whether namaste or a, uh, or a, a simple salam, a concept of not bringing slippers in the house or shoes in the house, a concept of uh, whenever we come from a social gathering or from a funeral, always having a bath. And one thing which was there, which I want to end with, is there was a concept of untouchability. Probably it may have come into the country to avoid the transmission of diseases from those people who are handling excreta or garbage. Unfortunately, over the years, it took on a religious overtone and became discriminatory in nature. But we have, over the past, a few year, uh, hundred years or so tried to get away with it. But unfortunately, now this new form of untouchability is now being practiced towards doctors and medical and paramedical personnel. And I myself have had, uh, have experienced it. Uh, so I, without getting, so I would request them that, uh, that you should, uh, that we all should become an educated community. We should be able to handle this problem in a more educated manner and not have prejudices. Then there are other these uh, glossary bibli bibliography and all uh, index with abbreviations to help you out to deal with this book in a much better way. Uh, so the take home messages, which I've been trying to put across is the wide prevalence of allergy, the manifestations can be very protein, you, there's a need to have an urgent knowledge, you need to understand the, the basic concepts, you need to understand the factors contributing to it. And the environment is the most important thing whether it is a food environment or the aero environment, which you really need to address, both at the local level and at the national level. 
And for those who want to have scan through the pages of my book, that is Winning Over Allergy, this is the book. You can go on to my website. This is my website, www.allergy.com. And I have put some in the, uh, images and uh, some excerpts from the book on that website. So I all request you to go on to my website. With these words, I thank you, and I'm open to all questions from you. Thank you. Thank you, Farhan. Farhan? Yeah, thanks, Dr. Arif. Thank you so much for uh, that. And we will uh, now open ourselves to questions. So there are no questions on the chat, but if somebody would like to ask Dr. Arif any question, please unmute your mic and, and you can ask now. Uh, can I, Dr. Saab? Yeah, everybody's anybody's open. Yeah, thank you so much for this very elaborate and you know very uh, graphic <laughs> presentation. I really appreciate your effort. Uh, does yeah, yeah, I was just you know thinking, does age play an important role in the allergy? With the age, will allergy going to uh, you know get reduced? Okay. Because children are more vulnerable, and when the teenage and also the adulthood, uh, they are more susceptible uh, to other kinds of diseases rather than allergies. Whereas in the old age, I think the old age people perhaps may not get uh, so much of you know con contracted with the uh, allergies. Is that a myth or is that fact? Sir? Okay. <laughs> An allergy is like. An allergy like a, thank you. Okay, allergy is like a volcano. You are either dormant or you are active. You cannot be, become extinct. You got that? So the volcano may be dormant for many years. And if there is a change in, the, I mentioned this, if there is a change in the environment, the environment is not suitable, then that volcano erupts. So what happens as the age advances? Okay, we have your your immune system may become better, and uh, your uh, your the air, airway passages and all are better. Are better. So you, uh, you suffer less, but that volcano can erupt at any time if the environment changes. I hope I have answered your point. Yes, sir. Partly, uh, I I also wanted to check. Uh, People, people who are averse to medicines, because most of the medicines that are, uh, you know prescribed by allopathy are by and large you know, steroids, and steroids have some kind of you know uh, uh, almost like an aversion to some people. So, uh, can we make the best use of the food, diet, and nutrition to cure or at least you know? take care of the allergies rather than going for medicines. OK. Now, I have made very clear about the steroids, that the steroids, if they use in the new form, such as the inhaled form, or uh, the intranasal form, or the topical forms, in the correct technique, they are very, very, very safe. And they can be taken lifelong. Get that point very clearly. Now, uh, as I say, well, all this good nutrition, good diet, vitamins, they are all immune booster. They, they, but provided you take the you take the right type, okay? If you are going to be eating, the snacking away with all, and you know the food which is there. So that's why we, I would recommend in our way, and don't tell me I'm marketing, but Farhan has this uh, organic products, okay? So you should go more for this organic products. You should avoid these foods which have pesticides in them, which have chemicals in them. I have a lady who comes with an articular rash. When I found, when I took in the detail the history, I found that usually when she has chicken, or uh, uh, this one, she gets this allergy. I checked for chicken and it was negative. So why is she getting it? When we changed from the desi, uh, from the English chicken to the desi chicken, she was not getting. It is because of the progesterone which is being injected in the chicken, which is causing it. She had a condition known as autoimmune progesterone dermatitis. So that's what I want. It can be so bad. It's a rare condition, but it can be so bad that you should use food which are more in a pure form and avoid unnecessary uh, this uh, um, processed foods. I, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Well, good evening, uh, Dr. Vinay. Yes. 
Please tell me, Dr. Uh, tell, tell me, Vinay, Mr. Vinay. Yeah, I will. Uh, I have multiple discussion, mm -hmm. but I have come to that point. So, just I wanted to know what is the gold standard uh, testing for allergy? Whether it is a screen flick test or rash? The 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 blood tests have not all the blood tests have been no fan. Not all the blood tests have been validated. The skin prick test is the best test. As far as food allergies, the gold standard, if you talk about it, is a challenge. The oral challenge is the gold standard for food allergies. But for aeroallergens, your skin prick test is very reliable. So I know that diseases have uh, stereotypes attached to them uh, in the sense that a lot of literature, a lot of accounts speak about how um, if you are, if you, how do I, so AIDS, you suffer AIDS, if you, um, a big reason for AIDS to happen is uh, homosexuality, right? Or a big cause of AIDS is homosexuality. These are like um, stereotypes and myths surrounding diseases. So I just want to know if there are allergies and allergies which have myths associated with them. And if they are, what are they, and so on and so forth. That's kind of what I want to do. Very specific. Yeah. Anjana, that's a very good question. But yeah, I did answer this. I have given you anecdotal episode, uh, incidences of these myths and all. First one is having an allergy to cold perfumes and all. I mentioned it. Okay, so that's what, like that is one of the myths which I mentioned. So like that, there are many other myths and all which we have. Uh, like, uh, and, the, and I've covered in my lecture, I said the other myth is people think that every itching is an allergy. No, only most of the itching may not be an allergy of the skin. It could be because of non-allergic uh, condition. It could be a fungal infection. It could be some other uh, chronic uh, diseases. So okay? I, um, I didn't, I should have made this clearer, like other attributes. So if you're promiscuous, you have AIDS. If you suppress your emotions, you have tuberculosis. No. This, so, uh, 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 where is the commentary on the person's personality, attributes, behavior, behavior all that? No. The, uh, the, uh, the, uh, which one is a allergy is, is a lifestyle disorder and the uh, cause of it is geno-environmental or epigenetics. So what do you mean by that? You need to be atopic. You need to have that particular gene within you to develop it. But uh, but when will you develop if you have that gene in you? When will you develop the allergy? You will develop that allergy when the environment changes for the worse, as it has been changing in the West. So you get from a point epigenetics. That's a new thing we're talking about: gene and environment. So if the gene is not there. <laughs> Okay, it's like, you know, very simply put it, it's like this hand is the gene and this hand is the environment. Okay, but if, uh, if only one is there, the hand becomes like this, moving around the air. But when, the, when both come together, then you get the impact, you get the clap. And that's the same thing with allergy. The gene and the environment interacting together. And when I say about environment, it could be the food environment or the Aero of the aero environment, which will make an impact on your living, and that is what we have to work on. Uh, and there's nothing else. being not is uh, you do it contacted with each other. It is a vertical transmission from the parents to the kids, not from uh, each from one person to the other. Uh, no, uh, I'm that part. I was I understood very well. Uh, it was clearly discussed and. Your lecture. What I'm speaking about is um, a lot of diseases in gen people who don't have an understanding of medicine, they believe that a particular disease is caused because of a person's mannerisms or behavior. Right? So if you lead a very, very extravagant, lavish lifestyle, they'll believe that. Yes, now you're coming to the point. Now you're coming to the point. Yes. yes. Allergies are seen, allergies are seen are, are more in the well of people, not in the poor people. Why are they? It is a lifestyle disorder. So, if you are going to live the 
uh, if, uh, for, as far as the uh, uh, home environment, when you talk about the home environment, if you call the error environment, if you're going to have this highly upholstered uh, sofas, carpets, the rich loaded house, you're going to have more and more allergies. If, you're, if your food habits are going to be such that lavish food eating always outside, unprocessed food, that is when you're going to have allergies. The poor don't suffer from allergies because their life and I've explained very clearly why the poor do not suffer from allergies. Okay. What is the psychological? Somebody is asking the psychological impact, right? Yeah. Can you read the question? The chat. What, what's the psychological impact of allergy on the person? And this is difficult. And it's difficult to diagnose. And the person continues to suffer. Very good question. Now, what is the psychological impact of allergy on the person? And is it? And this is difficult. Now, is uh, 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 psychological uh, because of and this also I made it very clear. Allergy is a chronic disorder. You don't die of it. You never get admitted in the hospital. But at least you so much of something that they are very disturbed psychology. The more they get this psychology, the more it activates the uh, allergy. So many a times we are needing to treat the depression, which will be aggravating the underlying allergy. So it's both ways. I mean, uh, the uh, uh, allergy leading to depression and the depression further aggravating the allergy. So both have to be dealt at the same time. Are there any other questions, please? Okay. Yes. Is there the my voice is resounded. Yeah, yeah. somebody is asking whether there's a social stigma, stigma attached to allergies. Mm -hmm. Well, I there is no disease which I feel should have a social stigma attached to it. And if it is so, if people are having it, then we really, whether it's tuberculosis, whether it's a HIV, we, we as an educated community have to remove these stigmas which are prevalent in the community. It is a bound, uh, bounding duty on the part of us as an educated community to remove all forms of uh, social stigma against all forms of diseases. Fine then. Uh, all right. So I don't think that there are any more questions uh, from the participants. And uh, with this, we will uh, bring this to a close, as I said earlier, that this entire session will be shortly edited and put on to our uh, website, uh, which is uh, lamakam.com. And we will also have this uh, on, uh, on our YouTube channel and on Facebook in a couple of days. So with this, we will end the session today. And I thank Dr. Arif once more for making the time to meet us all and uh, talk about his book and about the, about the, uh, the, the, the really fascinating field of allergies. Uh, good evening to everybody and uh, hope to see you people for the future events. Our event list is always on lamakan.com and we'll be glad to have you join us with the future sessions. Good night. Thank you for Thank you everybody for joining and taking time out. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everybody.